How low would you go? Would you go down low? All the way to the flow? Would you sell your soul to the devil like Faust? Hurt others in the process? A morally bankrupt man is no friend of mine. And I know morals can change from person to person. But I think we can all agree that the man in our next story deserves everything he's got coming. Alexander McKendrick's Sweet Smell of Success. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch. To the detectives with all the answers. To the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls. And the trusted ones too pure for this world. And all you double crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby faced amateurs. This one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Sin a shadow moonlights, noir vimper. We open with lights of a booming city. Newspaper printers are printing, and delivery trucks are spreading the news, all while being propelled by Elmer Bernstein's The Street. The newspapers seem to run the world in this small window of life. Most of it run by the columnists, who pick and choose what to print. J.J. Hunsecker, played by Burt Lancaster, being the most powerful one of them all. J.J. thinks of himself almost as a god. At one point, he calls out a senator. The senator wants to take one of his young honeys out, so he brings along a well-known talent manager with them as a decoy. You know, she's with him, not with me. Yeah, whatever, you old pervert. JJ also has an odd relationship with his sister, Susie, who is in love with jazz guitarist Steve Dallas. Wanting their relationship to stay the way it is, JJ doesn't want this loving couple to stay together. This is where Sidney Falco comes in, played by pretty boy Tony Curtis. J.J. wants Sydney to break them up in exchange for mentions for Sydney's clients in J.J.'s column. Sydney is another one of those self-serving jackasses who abuses his secretary and doesn't care who he hurts. J.J. keeps turning him down. No, you're dead, son. Get yourself buried. That's a harsh line. After being pushed in a corner, Sydney will do anything to get in the column. He tries to blackmail another columnist by spreading dirty laundry about Steve being a marijuana-smoking communist, in front of the guy's wife even. Leo ends up copping to the crime because of his contempt for Falco, and his wife claims it's the first clean thing he's done in years. At another point, he talks to his old pal Rita, who tells him a columnist tried to take advantage of her. Rita may lose her job for allegedly antagonizing, said columnist, and Falco barely listens as he looks for another man. Later on, he goes further into dictum by pimping her out to columnist Otis Elwell. She's not going for it, but after demeaning her, she relents. Sydney is low down trash, and the aura of downtown seems to be okay with it. Steve loses his job, and possibly his relationship. J.J. gets more controlling, and Sidney ends up selling his soul for peanuts. Before I go, I've got to mention the soundtrack. Performed by Elmer Bernstein in the Chico Hamilton Quintet, it's a jazzy thrill ride that will send your shoes all the way off till the bed rocks. What I mean by that is... I like it a lot, and I'll probably play it for the guys at work. Well, there you have it. Everyone's a jerk except for Steve and Susie. And I know I didn't go into too much, but I don't like to spoil everything. I just wanted to mention how dark this film is, being filmed mainly at night and everything. It turned people off in 57, as they were used to Tony Curtis as the pretty boy nice guy type, and that Burt Lancaster didn't kick too much butt. As for me, I love it when the nice guy plays a dirty, rotten scoundrel.